you're going to fo focus on the basics. So the way you understand Kion is you're stepping forward, punching back, rising long forward, my area back to number right. But you need all the components of that to be correct as well. So today we're going to work on the upper arm, on the arm movements, so how to punch, how to do the rising block, how to do the downward block. And then stand to come, we're going to leave for Malcolm Sensei's class, so we'll only touch on that. So just as a means to practice this and change it up a little bit for you, I'm not sure if you've learned Kibidachi yet, but if you haven't, or even if you have, take a listen. Kibidachi is more or less two shoulder widths apart. The whole idea with Kibidachi is that your feet are in. So by that I mean your toes are a little bit more in than your heels. Your toes are straight, don't go onto the sides of your feet, and you, you go down. So now the idea is, you have a look, if I drop a perpendicular off my knee, you'll see it's in line with my big toe. Then I push my bum forward, and that will automatically push my knees out. If you consciously try and push your knees out, you're going to get your feet sticking out. And that's a stance we don't have in Shotokan Karate, it's called Shikadachi and it doesn't exist. So, feet in, push bum forward, and down. Just uh, my knees a little bit sore still, so I'm a little bit higher than I would like you to be. Left hand to the front. When you're punching, if you have a look, there are two components. The one is obviously the arm going out, the other one is the retracted arm. So as you're coming up, very important that you keep your palm facing upwards until your elbow is past your side. If you do, if you turn too early, what will happen is your elbow will flick out and you get this rounded move. So if you listen, you can actually hear me doing that. And your idea should be to try and wear away this uh, seam on the side of your knee. As you come through, you're going to twist round. You must get a twist in the wrist and a tight fist as you lock onto your impact point. Your target is these two knuckles, which your first and second ones, aiming down your forearm in one line. If you have a look at my fist, half is on one side, half on the other side, almost like a hammer getting weight. If you punch like that, you'll get what's called a boxes fracture. And I can't tell you often I have to report those because we get x-rays of people who don't know how to punch. So the idea is these two, not those two, keep it straight, shoulder down, use your lat, but don't retract your shoulders. So just release your shoulder forward. Pulling arm is the reverse. So you want to turn immediately to lock that elbow in. As you're pulling back, listen again. You can hear that scraping sound and your fist retracts to your, what's called your thoracopelvic gap. So what that is, is if you feel your hip, you feel your rib cage, there's soft tissue in between that, hopefully hard muscle, not such soft tissue. That's where your fist goes, fist comes back and your elbow gets pulled back as much as you can. So that's our position. So we're going to try that. So have a look at my movement. Got it? Let's try that again. So we're going to do 10. Itch. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rick. Sitch. Hatch. Q. Ju. And hold. So if you have a look, opposite arm is pulled back, my shoulder is down, I'm aiming center, solar plexus, lat under control, correct line. So I want you to try 10 more on your own. Okay, so Michelle, pause the camera while you did your own set of 10. And the idea is you want to create neuromuscular pathways. So the more often you do it, the more you create that path, and it becomes natural. You know, you basically have to undergo the, the transition from subconscious incompetence to subconscious competence, which is the reckon between 100,000 and a million repetitions. So I think as white class, we have some time to go, but that's the idea. The more you do it and the more you do it correctly, the easier it becomes, and then you stop having to think so much. The other point is you will learn how to relax. So at the moment, to stop your injury, you have antagonist muscles that prevent your agonist muscles from coming out. The more you train, they start relaxing. So instead of pulling you back, you're able to release. And if you have a look, I'm getting core contraction and I'm getting hip contraction. A little bit advanced for you at this point, but that's where you're aiming for. We now work on rising block or I go. So as the name um, uh, intimates, it is coming up. It is rising. If you have my final position, I'm looking where I would wear my watch. One fist only away, away from your head, 45 degrees. And this is one of the few times where it's not necessary to hold your shoulder down because you actually want your power lifting. Of course, not your legs, your arm. 
Your cross is very important as well. So a common error that beginners make is just to change like this. If you do that, the punch is going to come straight through. So you need to protect yourself. You're basically catching that fist in your block and pushing it above your face. So as you can imagine, timing is essential in this, but also the path that you create. The pulling down arm has the opposite. So you pull it towards you and in. The one going up goes on the outside. Some people have a different idea whether your hand should be here, your hand should be there. I want to perturb by that, whatever is natural for you, provided you undergo the complete twist. So if you have a look, when I'm done, my palm is away from me, my palm is facing up on the retracted hand, and I keep making that wrist change over. That forearm and wrist creates a lot of power for you. So let's try it here. Itch, knee, sun, she. Go, rip, sitch, hatch, cue, chew. Right, have a look at your opposite arm, have a look at your position, one fist from your head, 45 degrees up. And again, your fist, whether you're punching or doing a yoga again, doesn't change at all. Watch your wrist when you pull back as well, 10 times yourself. Okay, so what we're doing is just pause again to while we give you a chance to do your reps. So the next one we're going to work on is downward block. So downward block, again, or get down the right, as it sounds, goes down. So you need to use your wind-up arm as a guide for where you want to do your blocking arm. So if you have a look at my wind-up, you want to bring everything inward. So centralize your block. Can you see what I'm doing? Some people put their arm on there, I find they're terribly uncomfortable and I think it's unnecessary. Just drop your elbow into the groove next to it, but close it in so you're quite centered on the movement. Also, the wrist action is essentially what you're doing with the get up right. It creates a lot of, again, your force. And what you could even think of is someone grabbing your wrist and you are extracting it, both in the wind and in the block. So the idea is, if you have a look at my wind, my shoulder is down, elbow is down, my palm is facing towards me. This is my guide. So there it is. There's a map for you. Cross and in. Can you see what I'm doing? So come down as well. Almost as if you are slicing meat. And through. Don't worry too much about the hip action for now. We'll discuss blocks being angled, punches being square a little bit later. So if you have a look at my wind up, you come down and in. Let's try the other one. Down and in. And if you notice, this is still the same kind of retraction or hit the tail arm, you are pulling back. So up and down. Up and down. So alternating arms. Up, you can see I'm very square at the moment. As I complete my movement, I just angle my hips slightly. Sun, pull that opposite arm and up. She. And up. So remember, you're centralizing and then you're pushing upwards. Go. And up. Rook. And up. Sitch. And up. And obviously, the faster you come down, the more force you make. You remember, force equals mass times acceleration. So accelerate through your movement. Hatch. And up. Q. And up. And you. Good. And relax. So now you're going to do 10 more reps on your own. Off you go. So as I said, repetition is the name of the game, but important to do correct repetition. So let's, we're going to do 10 more reps of punching, rising block, downward block. So in other words, I will keep get up rise. So also start becoming familiar with the terminology. It will come, you don't have to panic about it. But I get it, okay, get done by right. Okay, so back into your kibidachi, which is your straddle stance, 20 feet in, push bum forward, push the knees, up underneath. Arm out for punching, just a couple of points to remember. This arm, the retracting arm, turns immediately. This one has to wait until your elbow is past your side, so you want the rotation towards the end of the movement. Get your alignment right, not here. Wrist must be straight, so neither here nor up or down. Shoulders down, that's under control and center. And as you're doing it, try and accelerate through the movement 
and try and visualize those knuckles going through your phone. So if you watch a couple of demo, uh, a couple of reps. So continue yourself, you don't need to pause. Continue yourself, Let's, I'll count for you. Ich, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Rick, Sich, Hach, Q. Julian, if you wonder why I keep glancing this way, I have my wife in the, on the side getting her second lesson ever, despite uh, us being together for much longer than that. Um, so very good. Fine, very good. Uh, <laughs> she's too shy to be on camera. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we now go for Agur. Again, cross and up. Your path is important. Cover your entire face. Your bicep should be virtually against your face. 45 degrees, your wrist is important. Keep it straight, so the same straight, uh, same line that it is there is the line that is here. The oxid arm is pulled back, get your power, your force upward with your arm, but try and avoid standing up with your legs. So you want to lock on the legs, keep solid on the ground, and up, and up. For you, if you want to still take it slower, absolutely no problem doing that. Just make sure you are covering your face. So we're going to try 10, itch, knee. Sun, Shi, Go, Rig, Sich, Hach, Ku, Ju. And we traditionally Ki on the tenth one. So just so you understand, Ki, I really love the translation of it. Um, I, I can't speak Japanese, but as I understand it, it means tap into the life force. And I think that says exactly that. You know. Uh, Eastern philosophy is more on energy than Western, but the idea is you call it in Chinese qi, in Japanese it's ki, and it's ki ai. Uh, in Sanskrit it would be prana, but the whole idea is you have your energy reservoir or your hara over here, that's where you create and store it, and when you release, that's the energy release coming out, and the ki ai assists that because you're getting that expulsion from your own core contraction. So if you listen to my ki ai, <coughs> You can see how my whole body contracts at that point, that release of the energy. So you shouldn't be ki from your vocal cords. So if you can spell it, it's wrong. So often people even shout ki which makes no sense. You shouldn't be coming from here, it should be coming from there, and it should be a sound that is definitely not phonetic. Uh, okay, so let's move on to downward block. Feet in, under, wind up. Remember, close inwards, push outwards. Close inwards, push outwards. If you have a look, for now, it's a quite a tight movement. So up, down. As you get a little bit more senior, you'll probably make it slightly more of an ellipse so that you don't have a stop point up. But for now, you go up. Obviously, there has to be a fraction of a second where you stop, otherwise you can't change direction. And then you come down. Your effort is in the downward movement, not the one. So let's try. So when you do it faster, you can see how fast it's going to come up and down. But you go, go slow for now. So we'll count 10. Itch, Ni, Sun, Shi, Go, Rik, Sich, Haj, Ku, and Jin. 